I started using the Biosorb about a year and a half ago, and I had seen it marketed at the trade shows as a way to accurately place clips in a tumor cavity. And at that time, I didn't think it would help. However, as I thought about it, I realized that if I take a lesion out that's this big, my cavity opens up to about this big. And if I just close that defect, now I have clips scattered over a large area. If I put a biosorb in, I can sew the cavity right down to the device. So I've reduced my seroma cavity. And then over time, it takes about a year and a half for the biosorb to resorb. In that amount of time, we have some tissue ingrowth, the seroma stabilizes. So it greatly reduces any denting or deformity that we would have if I had not treated that seroma. And because I have a smaller area of tissue being irradiated with the boost, that also improves the cosmetic deformity. So I can get away with a lot less surgeon with equi or surgery with equivalent outcomes. I've been doing oncoplastic surgery for about nine years now. So in my practice, I routinely do mastopexy reduction, local tissue rearrangements. What I'm finding with the biosorb, and this is an area where I'm continuing to evolve, is if I put a biosorb in, I may not need to do quite as much tissue rearrangement. So again, I'll still make my intramammary flaps and glandular reshaping. However, I'm sewing the true margins to that device. So when my radiation oncologists have a patient that I have performed an oncoplastic procedure on, they're not wondering where those clips are and where the real margins are. And then a secondary benefit of it is if there is positive margin, it's very easy to go back through the original incisions, disconnect the biosorb at whatever margin was positive, take that tissue like we normally would, and sew the true margin right back to the biosorb.